All right, Peanut Gallery. It's so, the floor is yours. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Comic Con stuff. So, yes, so specifically with Ronda Rousey because she is uh, doing a Kickstarter right now where she is producing. I think it's either a comic or a graphic novel, something yes. along those lines. Yes, it's it's one of the two. Um, I don't... your your fucking Ronda Rousey, pay for it. <laughs> Well, I, I think that she wants to be more of a collaborative effort because she's not exactly known for being an artist or a writer. So I think that's the reason. Also, she's expecting a second child. Yeah, and, you know, that's that's fine, whatever. I mean, her whole thing is cooled down since all of her dumbass bullshit comments oh, yeah. about WWE, which have been patently false. But right. anyway. Um, so Joe Henry made a random appearance on an NXT house show. Yep, um, he, he will also be doing a <laughs> he, concert at Great American Bass. He is Bass. also doing a concert at Great American Bass, which is just fantastic. Like, why wouldn't this, you? This guy's getting a lot of attention in NXT. Like, oh, yeah. a lot of attention. Yep. Um, so, obviously, Melissa Santos has joined the AEW. Uh, I think she is actually being a... Either she's backstage or she's commentating. Do you um, know exactly? I saw both. Okay. I saw both for Collision specifically, but I could be wrong Well, that makes that. sense then since her husband is usually a Collision guy. He's usually Collision or Ring of Honor right, and they're which, essentially taped the yeah, same. And they're, yeah, they're taped the same night. So that would make the most sense. Yep. They have a couple of kids. Might as well have them together. But I think it's cool. I always like Melissa Santos. She's she's kind of underrated, mm -hmm. I think, a little bit. Not not too bad. Well, she hasn't. But... She wasn't really in the spotlight after Lucha Underground because mm -hmm. that's really where she made her name as yeah. the ring announcer for Lucha Underground. Right. So and right. that, that and was God almost ten years ago. I know, right? Oh Lord. <laughs> well, that's a juxtaposition. I've never thought I. Oh God. Uh, so, again, we did talk a little bit about the Tony Khan drama with regards to his um, whole thing with media rights, um, his whole thing with the the crossover events. Um, but I do want to get a little bit into kind of the, the media rights a little bit because, you know, I think I think what the issue is, is that we haven't heard anything more concrete from him right. with regards to these media rights, which... You know, especially with the the negotiations ongoing and the and essentially the contract being up in, in like towards the end of this year, mm -hmm. I think what is really concerning people and what's really given fire to uh, the news sites and everything is the lack of communication. Yep. And you know, being a private company, he doesn't have to communicate anything to us, which is different from the WWE because WWE is a publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. They have to they have to disclose they have to disclose publicly. certain things, and a lot of it has to do with you know what kinds of deals are going on because those deals affect the stock price of TKO. Now, Tony, now <clears throat> with Tony Khan's ego in mind, you know that if there was any sort of deal that mm -hmm. has been placed, it would have been announced immediately. Yeah. There's no way that he would keep it quiet for this long. Mm -hmm. And no other outlet has pointed out of any sort of deal yet. No. Now, could he have a deal? Yes. I'm not taking it out of the realm, but you are coming really, mm -hmm. really close. Uh, and you're making fans nervous or you're making them giddy with happiness because either a deal has not been struck or has been struck. We don't really know. Right. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, too, was uh, his comments about Ring of Honor possibly being a part of the media rights deal. And he made an interesting comment on how he thinks that Ring of Honor would be on TV if it was called AEW Ring of Honor. I don't see that and, at all. And I and a lot of people draw comparisons between that and WWE's version of ECW. So when WWE brought ECW back, the reason it was on sci-fi, the reason that they got on sci-fi was because it was WWE. Well, it wasn't called WWE ECW, but you had the WWE name behind that. Yes. Um, and that just shows, again, the power of the brand. But ECW has also had a long history beforehand. And it also, there was, there was a lot of hype around ECW at that point. Yes, there too. was. There was. Uh, they had that for a while. They did a couple of things mm -hmm. differently. 
Um, if they were really going to bring back Ring of Honor, I mean, Ring of Honor has been on TV for a while. It's not like Ring of Honor it's, is it's, not on TV. It is ever. on internet television. Yeah, it's on, it's on internet television now, but when it was part of Sinclair, it was on syndicated television. Mm, it you was. can watch it anywhere in the world. But I think, and, and again, I think that he made, I mean, I think it brought back a lot of comparisons to WWE, ECW, because essentially, Ring of Honor is AEW Ring of Honor. And we talk about it ad, ad nauseum as to how this is not the Ring of Honor of old. Right. It's just not. I mean, the belts are different. Mm -hmm. There are only a couple of people. They mention Jay Briscoe, any chance they get. But at the same time, I agree with you. Uh, the thing is, I don't think even renaming it AEW Ring of Honor will do anything. No, I, I don't legitimately think don't either. think so. I think if they really want to do this, and I will at least give Tony Khan. Uh, the the courtesy of saying, you know what? I like that you are trying to get Ring of Honor back on television. Mm -hmm. I would say just get rid of Collision and put it on Saturday. Right. I think you'd just be a lot better off oh, yeah. on that. I mean, they had to drop the Elton John song not too long ago. So right. uh, for uh, Collision's theme. Oh yeah. Uh, so there's that. Um. So I love this belt. I love it. <laughs> I, I love everything about it. Um. So let's talk about so this specifically, and and again. This is one of those things where people were criticizing um, New Japan Pro Wrestling for renaming these titles. This, I think, is the third title renaming so that it was, we've had. It was All Atlantic, yep. and then International, yep. and now it's the America. Now, I don't know if it's going to stay the America champion, though. You know, and I don't... I mean, this just brings back John Cena spinner titles to me. I mean, it's just a custom belt for a guy. Yeah, um, I agree with you on that. I, I, think 100%. I don't I don't see why you had to rename the title as well, but you know, whatever. I mean, it it the, the title does look cool. Yeah. But well, I mean, um uh, uh Lance Storm did it. He mm -hmm. renamed the um Hardcore and the Cruiserweight Champions the Canadian Champions. They he, I think he renamed the Television Champion the same. Um what I like about this is that with MJF pulling off this gimmick, being the heel and doing this, he's the only one who could get away with this and mm -hmm. kind of make it interesting. Yeah. Um, and nobody else could do it like MJF. No. Uh, he is defending this title on an indie show, I think, tomorrow, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous and stupid, but he yeah. is. Uh, it, people just drew the comparisons. I'm going to give it a chance, personally. Well, and I think this is... This is uh, this helps with his heel work too because of course all in is taking place in London, yep. which is where Will Osprey is from. Yep, and they're going to have their match there. I thought it was going to be Daniel Garcia, but I don't know where the hell Daniel Garcia was. Maybe Tony Khan finally realized that uh, Daniel Garcia is dog shit and has has the charisma of a, a bologna sandwich. Right. So MJF and Will Osprey, at least Will Osprey has a following and yep. has good charisma yep. and actually is very versatile in his and uh, can have good skills. matches. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is, I think, good. What I would love to see, and I pointed this out on the Lower Shore reviews, is that I would love for MJF to start a MAGA gimmick. Make AEW great again. That would How be amazing. How awesome would that be? Yeah, get, get the not, right not, not, not directly go with like the Trump shit, but... Play, like play pro, off of it, like like pro America. Yeah, like uber pro America. Like, yeah, play the, the off patriot, of it. right? Exactly. That'd be awesome. I think that would really work. And oh, with yeah. with the gaudiness of the belt, I think it would just make it even better. Right. Um. So Camille finally made her debut, yep. and it was kind of rushed. Weird. It was rushed. You it know was, why? Because yeah. people were drawing the comparisons of why isn't she debuted yet? It's fucking Camille. Her her whole momentum is dead. Uh, now she's a lackey to Mercedes Monet. This bitch used to feel like the final boss of women's wrestling. Yeah. And now she's playing second fiddle to the worst of the four horsewomen. Right. Wonderful. Uh, she should have gone to WWE. Yep. So um, let's talk about... So what I want to talk about with this specifically is... Is a reformation of her business going to happen because obviously both of these two are done with wwe no they're not yeah they are bobby lazuli is still on their roster he's hurt but he is his contract is expiring and he's on his way out they're they're essentially only in wwe in name as of right now they're so both of them have been removed from internal rosters mm -hmm. um and they're both they're both uh they, i don't think they even got a contract renewal i think that they're just going to let them go 
Um, and the first thing I want to talk about with this is, and this has drawn a lot of comparisons, um, but it's it's the treatment of black re- wrestlers under this new regime specifically. Okay. Um, it hasn't been the most stellar <laughs> in the world. Um, obviously, you have someone, obviously, you have Bobby Lashley, um, MVP, kind of being put off to the wayside. You have a lot of, uh, you know, like Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins kind of being moved down the card. Well, uh, they, they really have, they're really just as about the same. I mean, they were, they did really good in the gauntlet. They almost ran the whole gauntlet. Mm-hmm. They finally were beaten by the bloodline. But as a um, reaction to that, now I will say there are growing pains to the new regime. There are. But the black wrestlers are still very prominently there, displayed on there. And there are still a few like the New Day who have been given roles on television. Um, but Kofi, Kofi's hurt now, mm-hmm. so he's out. Uh, Bobby Lashley is very hurt. Yeah. Uh, um, but again... But, but the the point and then um Omas WWE's pretty much given up on Omas. I'm not surprised. I'm because Omas just wasn't very good. To but but with. you know once again look at what they're doing with NXT with right. Trick Williams, right. Carmelo Hayes is being pushed quite yep. well. He's he's still really young. People like give him a minute. Yep. Obafemi. And then Obafemi, who mm-hmm. feels like the god tier wrestler. I mean, and it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's it, a, is. A, it is. It it's is. It's a, a mixed very bag. mixed bag. Um, but uh, there are there are ideas that. Um, MVP and Bobby Lashley would reform the Hurt Business. Now, would they reform the Hurt Business in AEW or TNA? I think I could TNA, TNA would be a better place. To I could that. I could 100% see TNA. I think that would be a much better spot for mm. Bobby Lashley and for MVP uh, to do something like that. Yeah. They would just get lost in the shuffle as it relates to that. And I will say one thing. Uh, yeah, Swerve Strickland is the world champion, but is he really the world champion? Right. He just doesn't feel like a world champion. No, he doesn't feel like a final boss. Yeah, he's not the final boss of AEW. No. He's a straight up not. So uh, if they do reform the Hurt Business, they really got to put them on the pedestal yep. that McMahon had Bobby Lashley yep. as WWE champion. Yep. Now, could Bobby Lashley carry AEW into something new? Definitely. I mean, the guy is still very athletic given mm-hmm. his age. And MVP is a great mouthpiece yep. for any wrestler. Yeah, he so, is. So uh, if, if they are really gone then it would be a good get for mm-hmm. AEW, but it would also be a really good get for TNA. But right. I think, but you know, I, th- I think the history with TNA, I think that would work and, a little bit better. And we got to think, and the thing is about this too, is that I don't think AEW has quite the same appetite for WWE wrestlers. Because obviously if people like Ricochet, Ricochet is gone from the company, but we still haven't seen him appear anywhere. Right. I mean, not anymore. They used to scoop up anybody oh, yeah. that they could get as it relates to WWE. But that's... Well, okay, keep in mind, Mercedes Monet's contract alone is $10 million. They, Yeah, they, they probably can't afford it. Yeah, they're cutting costs left, right, and center. I mean, yeah. they, they have the death grip on Buddy Murphy or Buddy Matthews right now. They don't want him to leave because he'll go back to WWE. Mm-hmm. I was about to make that into a drama, but... Uh, that's a thing. He was given a very lucrative deal mm-hmm. because they don't want him to go back to WWE. Right. So maybe they just can't afford it anymore. Yep. So Vince McMahon drama. So Vince McMahon has filed a motion to resume the lawsuit. Yes. Um, but that's all I got. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really all you can do yeah. with that. I mean, Jan- um, uh, Janelle's or Jeanette's. Janelle. Janelle's. Um, lawyers have requested lawyers, something. Lawyers requested the pause. Mm-hmm. They were granted the pause. Because they are trying to gather more, more. things mm-hmm. to continue the investigation. But now the lawyers with the big man are trying to continue it because if they continue to drag it out, mm-hmm. um, the uh, the continuance will say, well, you they're, don't have enough evidence to right. continue on this investigation. Exactly. So, so that's what they're trying to do. It's just, it's just power play. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a power play. So let's talk about London. Um, just, you know, with um, with AEW having successful stadium events at all. And obviously, Triple H and Nick Khan were in Europe. So they're like, oh, let's just go visit London for a bit and have a meeting. And I, they're committing to a major premium live event in London. We do not know if it's WrestleMania. Um, remember, John Cena famously did his pitch to WWE for WrestleMania to be in London. Um, yep. Anything can happen. Yep. <laughs> 
Exactly. Well, especially with all of these premium live events being international and how absolutely successful they are. Mm -hmm. They're like, look at this track record of success yep. after success after success in France and in Puerto Rico. Yep. And they're still- And then they, they still have money, money in the Bank was in London. No, no it was in Toronto. I'm it sorry. was in Toronto. That was, that was the last Money in the Bank yeah. that was in London. Um, that was also very successful. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it looks like there are going to be a big event, and we don't know what that is. Uh, Michael Satamura announced that she is retiring. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's going to be spring of next year is yes. when she's going to have her last match. Yes. And she was also challenged because she's doing a couple of indie shows in Japan as well. Um, and it looks like Emi Sakura has challenged her to a match. That'd be interesting. That, I think that would be the first time that a contracted AEW and a contracted WWE person were uh, would be put in a match. If this match were to happen, I think it'd be the first time ever. I think like a direct match. Yep. I think here's the thing with um, Satomura. She is a legend mm -hmm. in uh, women's wrestling, especially in Japan. Yes. I think WWE are going to give her a little bit of a freedom to sort of go wherever she wants. Yep. So stardom. Mari Gold, right? Obviously, the stuff with WWE. I would like to see her in one premium live event match. Mm. It doesn't have to be for title, but I would like to see something really interesting. Maybe the match with Julia. Right. I think that would be a great Julia match. And um, Satomura, like this mm -hmm. is my last title or my last match on television, WWE mm. wise. Right. I think that'd be a great way to get. Uh, Julia, mm -hmm. with a really good first step, is to take on literally a Japanese wrestling legend. Hmm. I think it'd be nice. Awesome. But anyways, that's all I got. Yep. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to talk about the good and the bad of Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor. Yay.